everyone, it's Allison. Welcome to my YouTube channel and another fun video. Today we're going to be making two for one cards using some stencils from the Spellbinders February 2024 Stencil of the Month Club and a really fun product. So here you see I made two sets of cards. They're both two for ones and I think we're really going to have a lot of fun with this one. So here is the Stencil of the Month Club. This is called the Spring Stencil Backgrounds. And you see there are actually four stencils. Now these aren't layering stencils. These are actually four separate stencils. So I'm just using this orange piece of paper to show you the different stencil designs. And these are just great for backgrounds. And you'll see there's a circle for this one that creates a mask. Now here is the fun product we're going to be using. These are flock transfer sheets. Now you can get these from ThermoWeb. They're, you'll see they're just plain white on the back. They're pretty thin and they're kind of fuzzy velvety texture. And you'll see I have plenty of colors in my stash. I've had these for years. I don't use them a lot. Uh, so I was really excited to try it with these stencils. So here's the first stencil we're gonna use, and I'm gonna spray the back with Pixie Spray. Now I spray it outside, and then I come back in. This is maybe about 40 seconds later. I'm placing it onto a piece of cardstock. Now I'm using light blue paper because I wanna get a tone on tone look. We're using that light blue flock that I showed you before. And this is how we're going to get the flock onto the paper. This is called Transfer Gel Duo. And it's this really cool product. And you'll see what it's gonna do, but it's, it's very thin and creamy texture. So it's really easy to spread. Now I have my stencil pal out. This is gonna help me spread it. I love using this for paste. It just gets a really nice even layer through your stencils. And I'm actually gonna swap out my stencil mat. I'm gonna put this on just a plain scratch piece of copy paper. Now I have this little spatula from Nuvo from Tonic Studios. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of this gel on here. Now put as much as you want because at the end you can put it back in the bottle. And I always think that I'm putting on enough, but I always soon realize that I did not put enough on. So you'll see I scraped the excess onto the actual stencil pal. And now I'm going to start spreading it. And as soon as I start spreading it, I mean, even before I started spreading it, I knew that I just hadn't put enough on. So like I said, just be really liberal in the amount that you put on. You know, I'm just coming back in with more. It's not that big of a deal. Now that... Uh, pixie spray at the beginning is keeping that stencil really tight to my paper. So this gel is not going to go underneath the stencil. I'm going to get a perfect design. Now here, uh, there was like a little stripe going down. I was trying to get rid of it. It really doesn't matter because the flock covers it. You don't really see the stripe. Um, so now I, here's where you can just put the excess back, which is why it doesn't matter how much you put on at the beginning. Just put it right back into the bottle. All right, so here's the big reveal. I'm carefully pulling it up. And I'm going to try to find a spot on the paper that I can just put my thumb very carefully. And here we go. Perfect design. And now this is two hours later. It's clear and shiny compared to how it was when it was wet, it was white. So you know that it's ready when it's clear and shiny and you can touch it. It's kind of tacky to the touch, but not really. So now I have another piece of copy paper that I've folded in half. And here's the flock. Here's that blue sky flock. Now, if this were foil, I would want the shiny side facing up, but it's flock. You want the actual flock side to be touching your design or the gel that we put on that paper. So I'm putting 
putting that in my little folded piece of copy paper and I have my die cutting machine ready and you just run this through your die cutting machine like you would a die. Now I ran it through three times. You don't have to. I just personally haven't used flock through my die cutting machine before. I, I've used flock in the laminator. I've used foil with this gel duo through the die cutting machine. But again, just hadn't used flock before. But you're going to see it just worked perfectly. Now I sped this up. I'm actually going really slow pulling this up because I just didn't want to pull it up too quickly and have, I don't know, I don't know what was going to happen, but I'm going very slow, even though it doesn't look like it. And here we go. Absolutely perfect results. I'm just rubbing my hands over it to enjoy all the textury goodness. It's fuzzy and velvety and Here's the negative piece, just as cool. Now you can see how thin that is. All right, so now I have taken another stencil from that stencil of the month club. And this color is called Blue Diamond Flock. I don't know if it's still available, but it's this gorgeous dark turquoisey blue. And so here are the two sets. Now on the left bottom, I did use that turquoise blue flock on a, kind of a turquoisey color cardstock to get that tone on tone look again. Now I want to use those negative pieces, but you can see they're curled up and they're thin. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking two sheets of just plain card, white cardstock and I'm putting double adhesive sheets on them. These are from Altenu. And so I'm applying the paper to one side of the adhesive. And then I'm just cutting off the excess and I can put this piece away and use it for later. Now, this is the other side of the adhesive sheet. Now I can apply this to that negative piece of flock. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give it stability because now it has a nice piece of cardstock on the back and look how stable that is now. And here's, the, here's what it looked like originally. It's very thin and curled up. So that's a great way to be able to use your negative pieces of flock. All right, let's make some cards. These, this is the small die of the month for February. This is the rain boot bouquet. And you can see there's a boot and flowers and petals and all that. So I have cut two boots and this is yellow glossy cardstock. It's actually, Simon Says Stamp makes this color blend cardstock. You can kind of see where it blends into green at the bottom of this boot. And each boot has these little pieces that pop out. I, I'm gonna call them highlight pieces. So I popped them out of the yellow boot and now I have cut a white boot out of just white cardstock. And I am going to use these little pieces for my yellow boot to kind of create little highlights on the boot. So to attach these white pieces, I'm just putting plain scotch tape on the back of my yellow boot, covering those little holes or slits, whatever you wanna call them. And now I can just come in and put my little white pieces in there. It's basically die cut inlay that I'm doing. And there's what the boot looks like when I've gotten all the white pieces in there. And now I can use that white boot to glue on the back of my yellow boots just to give it a little more heft and stability. Now, when I put white die cuts on the back of colored cardstock, I like to run a marker around the edges. So I'm running a yellow marker around and then when I glue this onto the back of my boot, it will look like I, like it's two layers of yellow paper. I just like doing that. You don't have to do that. It's just a little detail. Now, why don't I just use yellow cardstock to glue on the back? Well, first of all, I, I needed those little white highlights, but you know, yellow cardstock is more expensive. It's a lot less expensive to use your bulk white cardstock and just run a marker around the edge. 
So now I have these little details for the boot, the top and the bottom, and I cut that out of orange glossy cardstock, again from that same Simon Says Stamp color blend cardstock pack. And I think these boots are just so adorable. So there we go. That's what the boot looks like. And I'll obviously do the same thing with the other boot. So now I, I have just kind of played around with my layout. And these are the pierced mini labels. That's what my sentiment is stamped on. And I'm starting with my sentiment because it's going to be on the very bottom of my design. So when I lay out my designs and I, and I finally get happy with it, I then start gluing from the very bottom up. And here you saw me using my T-square to make sure that sentiment was nice and straight. So now I'm pulling elements off because the next thing I need to glue on are the leaves that come out of this bottom boot, the boot that's going to be on the bottom. So I'm just kind of taping my boot in place for now. And now I can start gluing these leaves in. And I'm using Gina K glue. Uh, the reason is this glue is thicker and a little bit wetter than my... Um, barely arts glue my barely arts glue has I use a fine thin tip and because I live in Colorado it dries so fast and it's just so thin that you know I I just wanted to use something thicker on this flock because I am gluing paper to this kind of velvety flock texture right so now that I've glued all the elements that go inside the boot I can finally come in and glue the boot down now for the boot that goes on top, I have some thin foam squares. Some of them I've placed on the back of the boot itself and some I placed on the actual card panel. I just find that easier because then I know exactly where to put the foam. Um, and now I'm coming in with thicker foam squares. These are from Simon Says Stamp because this flower is gonna be sitting on the very top and now I'm just making sure it's the right thickness and you know, then I can put as many little slivers of that on the back of the flowers I need and glue it on there. Now these cute little daisies, these are from the small die of the Mother Club as well. And I'm, I'm just kind of using them as embellishments. I think they're really sweet. So I'm just gonna glue a couple towards the bottom. And then before I glue the one at the top, I decided that I really needed another leaf to kind of balance things out. So I'm just cutting one really short and I'll just tuck it behind that flower. And I really was trying to keep the design simple because the background is kind of so busy. And I know this tiny little daisy is just kind of hanging there, but again, I was I'm using these little daisies as embellishments and I just think they're so sweet. And this card just makes me smile when I look at it. I think this would cheer anybody up. All right, here is the other card that I made with that blue flock. So this is the actual flocked piece. The one that I did with the boot was the negative piece. And I just did a very simple sentiment and I hot foiled it in gold foil and the flowers are again from the Small Die of the Month Club. Uh, the other three cards are pretty simple. So you can see these as well are simple. Uh, these are with the lighter color flock, that blue sky flock from before. And I used the Be Bold Blooms for these two cards because I felt like the flowers kind of matched the stencil pattern a little bit better. And so here's the second one. And you'll see I use that same label die as I used earlier. And I heat emboss this sentiment with gold embossing powder. It's from Gina K. I think it was a collaboration with Hero Arts. And speaking of being thankful, I am very thankful for you. Uh, for watching my videos, for supporting me. Uh, I just really appreciate it and wanted you to know that. Uh, so I hope that you liked these cards. I hope you had fun watching. I had fun making them. I 
just love flock. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.